So last Sunday, uh, I was preaching about uh, uh, the areas where the restoration is necessary in our Christian life. And uh, uh, we discussed about the first area where the restoration is necessary. Uh, 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 that, was the, that was the restoration from the captivity, right? Restoration from the captivity. And uh, uh, we learned uh, about many things uh, about the historical background of uh, the Jewish people and uh, how they were taken into the captivity. Uh, and also uh, we were listening about the, about the prophecies and uh, uh, its fulfillment about uh, the captivity and return back to, back to Jerusalem. Amen. And I said, our God is faithful in his words regarding the punishment or the chastisement and also the promises regarding the blessings. Amen. And, 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 and today I'm going to uh, speak about uh, the second area of our life where we need the restoration. The second area of our life where we need the restoration. So last week we have been thinking about, I mean, I mean, what is the what is the first area from where we need the we need the uh, restoration? That was the that was the area of captivity. You know, we are sometimes under the captivity or the bondage of something or somebody, and we are supposed to return back from that place to the to Jerusalem or to the native city or to the presence of God. Amen. So uh, today we are I mean, speaking about the second area from where we need the restoration. And Jason brother will be uh, reading the Bible verses today. Amen. So the second area where we need the restoration is the restoration of the worship. The restoration of the worship. And in order to understand the importance of the worship, we need to read the whole chapter of Ezra chapter three, Ezra chapter three. But just to uh, get an idea, we will read Ezra chapter three, verses one through three. Amen. Ezra chapter three, verses one to three. Okay, Jason brother will be reading the Bible verses today. And uh, I request uh, uh, brother Jason to read that, read that. And when the seventh month was, was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Then stood up Jeshua, the son of Jezodak, and his brethren the priest, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltiel, and his brethren, and builded, and builded the altar of God of Israel to offer burnt offering thereon, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. And they sat and, and they set the altar upon its face. For fear was upon them because of the peoples of the country. And he offered burnt offering thereon unto Jehovah, even burnt offering morning and evening. Amen. So the restoration of the worship. You know, here in this particular three verses we read that, I mean, right after the returning of Jerusalem, uh, re returning back to Jerusalem from Babylonian captivity, they together started to rebuild the altar of God to offer the burnt offerings. So the first thing that they did was rebuilding the altar. The first thing that they did was the rebuilding the altar even before they rebuilt the temple, right? Even before they rebuilt the temple, they were trying to rebuild the altar. So we think about these things when we think about these things, just keep one, one thing in your, in, your, in your mind that always the altar is the related to the temple and for the Jewish people, the temple is the most important factor of the worship. Okay, For the Jewish people, the temple is the most important factor of their worship. That means without a temple, the altar is invalid. Without a temple, the altar and the worship is invalid. So. The most important thing for the people of Israel is the temple of God, temple in Jerusalem. Now, actually, as soon as they returned back to Jerusalem, I mean, they came to know that the situation is really bad. The things are really messed up. And they see the destruction of many valuable, I mean, things in their I mean, native city. The Jerusalem temple is demolished. And the valuable instruments of the I mean, temple has been taken away and the other holy and consecrated instruments which were used inside the temple were dispersed here and there. 
I mean, and the altar is completely damaged and the wall of Jerusalem is destroyed by the enemies. I mean, we see that there are, there are many things is destroyed and demolished. Everything is destroyed by the enemies. And it was really a heartbreaking thing for the people of Israel. You know, the, the, the enemies, I mean, they captured Jerusalem and they were just, I mean, trying to I mean, destroy everything. The temple was destroyed. I mean, the, 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 the altar was destroyed. All the instruments which was inside the temple, it was, in, I mean, it was, I mean, already destroyed. I mean, they captured that place and they were, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, getting into that place and destroying everything. Okay, and one thing you have to remember, I mean, in their way back to Jerusalem, they might be, I mean, talking each other about what would be the situation of a native city and the beautiful temple which was made by Solomon. So the first, I mean, uh, temple was made by Solomon. So they were always thinking and they, they might be, I mean, talking each other, what would be the situation of our native city and the beautiful temple? When we were leaving this place, I mean, we were, I mean, having that beautiful temple there and we had an altar there, but now what would be the situation of that altar? In fact, the new generation among the exiles had never actually seen the temple and the altar, but they had heard the stories and the parents and the grandparents delighted to, I mean, I mean, tell them that how glorious it is. You know, the new generation, the people, I mean, the, those who were born in, when they were in exile, when they were in captivity, those people, those generations were not knowing anything about, they didn't see anything about the temple or the altar, but they had, I mean, heard the stories from their parents or grandparents that, I mean, how delighted it is to go to the temple of God and to sacrifice, I mean, the animals in the, in the altar. I mean, so when I was reading this portion, uh, a thought came into my mind and I was just thinking why these people gave more importance for rebuilding the altar than rebuilding the temple. This is what I was thinking when I was reading this portion. You know, I told you once again, I, mean, I told you once that, uh, I mean, these people, as, as soon as they came back from, uh, I mean, Babylon to Jerusalem, they started to rebuild the altar of God. And I was thinking why these people were giving more importance to rebuild the altar than the rebuilding of the temple. And I got the answer that it's only because they understood altar is the place where the real offering or real sacrifice take place. Hallelujah. Let me repeat the same sentence once again. Altar is the place where the real offering or sacrifice take place. I mean, so we have to understand what is the importance of the altar. I mean, there is a temple, but these people are just looking into the temple and they see that, okay, the temple also is destroyed. But all of a sudden, when they, when they reach back to Jerusalem, they are starting the rebuilding or the, or, the, or the building of the altar because they were knowing very well that altar is the place where the real offering or sacrifice take place. I mean, the altar was the place where the people directed their attention because it was here that the priest offered, offered the sacrifices to God sacrifices of wheat, the sacrifices of oil and animals. I mean, so it was here that their sins were forgiven. At the altar, their sins were forgiven. And now it was gone. Now it was gone. I mean, and so they started to work to restore the, the, uh, and rebuild the altar so they could once again make offering to God. I mean, it was only after the rebuilding of the altar had been finished would they start the task of the rebuilding of the temple. Okay, they were knowing that it is a task. Rebuilding the temple also is a task and rebuilding the altar also is a task. But at the same time, they were trying to rebuild the altar first just before doing the, the rebuilding of the temple. You know, there were actually two altars related to the temple. Uh, to altars related to the temple. The first one is the small altar just outside the holy, holy, holy priest, I mean, holy, holy place, which was called the incense altar. And here the priest burned incense each day. I mean, there are two, uh, uh, let, me, let me tell you one thing. There are two, mainly there are two, I mean, uh, altars related to the temple. The first one is a small one. 
The first one is a small one that is called the, the altar just outside the Holy of Holy, which was called the incense altar, incense altar. And here the priest burned incense each day. And the second one, and the second one is the larger one. Okay, and one which, which was a larger altar, which was located at the entrance of the temple, entrance of the temple. And this was actually the bigger size and it was constructed out of bronze. And it was in this altar that, uh, that the offerings were made to God. And this is the altar that had been destroyed and was rebuilt in Ezra chapter three. So when you read Ezra chapter three, we see that I mean, there is an altar which is already destroyed by the, by the Babylonians. And these people, after coming back from Jerusalem, they are trying to rebuild this altar. This is the altar, the larger one is the altar that they were trying to rebuild again to worship the Lord and to offer the sacrifices unto the Lord. Now, let us think about the importance of the altar in the Old Testament and what is the spiritual meaning of the altar in the New Testament. I mean, the importance of the Old Testament and what is the spiritual meaning of the altar in the New Testament. So uh, I still uh, uh, remember, I still remember when I was I mean, taking the classes from a uh, book of Hebrews, I told you that the Old Testament is the shadow and the New Testament is the reality. So do not try to take everything from Old Testament literally, but try to find out what is the spiritual meaning and spiritual application of those things in our, in our, in our life today. You know, always think about, I mean, the Old Testament is the, I mean, re, I, mean, I, I mean, shadow and the New Testament is the reality. Old Testament is the shadow and New Testament is the reality. I mean, so we have to take the spiritual meanings of the, I mean, uh, the Old Testament things and events. So if it is so, then here we are trying to understand what, the, what are the spiritual meaning of the Old Testament altar and the need of restoration and rebuilding of the Christian worship. That is the another I mean, topic that I'm going to speak about. I mean, so if, 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 if we see that and if we understand that, I mean, I mean uh, the Old Testament is the I mean, shadow and the, the, the New Testament is the reality, we have to understand what is the spiritual meaning of the Old Testament thing and the spiritual meaning of the altar, I mean, and the need of restoration and rebuilding of the Christian worship. So the, the Old Testament altar and its spiritual meaning, the Old Testament altar and its spiritual meaning. So when we study about the Old Testament history, we understand people of Israel were commanded to offer mainly five kinds of offerings or sacrifices on the altar that we can see in uh, uh, Levit Leviticus chapters, chapters one through five. Okay, so the people of Israel, they were commanded to offer mainly five kinds of offering. And that is the command which is given to Moses. Uh, the, the first one is, I mean, a burnt offering. Then the I mean, second one is grain offering. And the third one is peace offering. And the I mean, fourth one is sin offering. And the fifth one is the trespass offering. These are the main five offerings that the people of Israel, they were, I mean, supposed to do. That is what we see in Leviticus chapter one, chapters one through five. And they were supposed to offer all those offerings on the altar according to the order given through Moses, according to the order given by Moses. And each offering had some special purpose of doing. You know, whenever they were offering something, whenever they were doing the offerings and sacrifices, it has a purpose, it has a purpose. And without a purpose, there is no offering. It, without a purpose, there is no sacrifice. They were doing every sacrifice, every offering at the altar, I mean, with the purpose and God has given the purpose for the offering, all those things, that, I mean, through Moses. Now, the first thing that we have to understand, what is the altar? And what is the, what is the spiritual and New Testament meaning of the altar? The first one is the place of receiving the place of receiving. Altar is the place of receiving. Amen? Hallelujah. When, when they do the offering, you have to understand one thing, they get the satisfaction and they're getting the forgiveness of their sins and they're get, getting the peace. You know, they, they got to go to the, I mean, I mean, uh, 
temple and they go to the i mean altar and when they are i mean doing the offering when they are doing the sacrifice or when they are offering something at the altar what is happening they are receiving something that's the reason i'm saying altar is the place altar is the place where i mean we we will receive something we will receive something they are getting the forgiveness of their sins i mean they are getting the satisfaction they are getting the peace in their mind i mean that's why we read in isaiah chapter i mean 53 verse 5 we read isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 yeah but he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed what is that jesus was crushed for our iniquities and he was chastened for our peace that is the meaning of that verse jesus was crushed for our iniquities and he was chastened for our peace in order to give us peace in order to give the the, the satisfaction in order to in order to give the welfare i mean well being being of us i mean god jesus christ was i mean i mean crushed on the cross of calvary and jesus was chastened for our peace that is what we see in isaiah chapter 53 verse i mean 5 again one more verse we'll read first king chapter 1 verse 50 first king chapter 1 verse 50 and adonijah feared because of solomon and he arose and went and caught hold of the horns of the altar amen so here we see the horns of the altar provides them the refuge and the fortress amen the refuge and the fortress so when we read uh, first king chapter 1 verse 50 here we see if somebody hold on the horns of the altar if somebody is holding on the horns of the altar he receives the refuge and the shelter the horns of the altar provides them the refuge and the fortress i mean and 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 the burning of the call of the altar takes away the iniquity and forgiveness of the sins that's what we read in isaiah chapter 6 verse 6 and 7 isaiah chapter 6 verse 6 and 7 yes bro isaiah chapter 6 then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the thorn, with the tongs from off the altar and he touched my mouth with it and said lo this has touched my thy lips and thy iniquity is taken away and thy sins forgiven i mean what is that i mean so through through through, through the burning coal of the altar it takes away the iniquity and forgiveness of the sins I mean, here we read in this particular verse that when the seraphim touched the mouth of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah with a burning call of the altar. That means that burning call is taken from the altar. So his iniquity has been taken away, and his sins were forgiven. We will be thinking about the spiritual meaning of all these things. We are just reading that verses, then we will think about the spiritual meaning of that. And again, in Numbers chapter sixteen. Numbers chapter sixteen verses forty six through forty eight. Numbers Both chapter. Moses said unto Aaron, Take thy censer and put fire therein from off the altar, and lay incense thereon, and carry it quickly unto the congregation, and make atonement for them, for there is wrath gone out from Jehovah. The plague is begun, and Aaron took as Moses spake, spoke, and ran into the midst of the assembly. and behold the plague was begun among the people and he put on the incense and made atonement for the people and he stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stayed amen so where it when aaron made an atonement with a fire from the altar and the censer quickly the plague among assembly had been stopped so this is what we understand you know when the people are coming near to the altar and when when the people are related and having the fellowship with the altar there are changes happening there are transformation happening you know here we read when i mean i mean i mean aaron uh, made the atonement with the fire from the altar and also the censer quickly the plague among assembly had been stopped i mean so remember the altar indicates the cross of jesus christ and cross of calvary 
remember i mean hallelujah the altar in the old testament indicates the indicates the i mean cross of calvary and jesus christ i mean and it gives the satisfaction it gives the forgiveness of our sin refuge and fortress we have the deliverance from the i mean presence of jesus christ hallelujah we have the freedom from this altar of jesus for jesus was sacrificed for the atonement of the sins of you and me amen so let me encourage you this morning i mean reach to the, the altar of god hallelujah let us go to the i mean altar of jesus christ which is the cross of calvary and when we go to the cross of calvary i mean there is the satisfaction there is the peace of god and there is the freedom and there is the deliverance from all kinds of sins and everything hallelujah because jesus is the person who was sacrificing himself at the cross of calvary hallelujah so let us come come back to that place and ask to the lord oh lord i mean i'm coming i mean i mean coming back to your presence and i need the freedom i need the 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 the, the deliverance oh lord i need the peace from you oh lord i mean i need the satisfaction from the lord so hallelujah so remember altar is the place of receiving many things altar is the place of receiving many things hallelujah and we will go to the second i mean the spiritual second spiritual meaning of the altar i mean what is that altar the place of the place of surrender i mean altar the place of surrender i mean so uh, the people of israel bringing we see that the, those people were bringing the animals to offer in the altar okay and they were bringing the animals to offer in the altar i mean so that indicates the complete surrender or complete submission i mean complete surrender or complete I mean, submission so the altar always speaks about the place of surrender the place of surrender if a person is bringing an animal to that place when a person is bringing an animal to the altar that speaks about that person is completely surrendered in the presence of god that person is completely submitted in the presence of god the bible says each part of the sacrificed animal must be burned inside the altar not even a single part of the animal was not seen outside the altar which shows our complete surrender and dedication and our consecration i mean this is very important to understand you know when they are coming for the animal sacrifice i mean they they have to do one thing i mean even a single part of the animal was not seen outside the altar each part of the sacrificed uh, sacrificed animal must be burned inside the altar hallelujah which shows uh, i mean we have to have that complete surrender and we have to have that complete dedication in our life and we have to have that complete consecration the consecration means the holy life i mean i mean every part of our body should be i mean burned enough inside the altar of god hallelujah that is what we understand from the worship so we used to sing uh, usually that song i surrender all right i surrender all all to thee my blessed savior i surrender all right i mean let me ask you one thing are you really singing that song from your heart Man, we used to sing that song. I surrender all, right? I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all, right? I mean, most of the time, what is happening? We sing that song for namesake. Simply, we are singing. I mean, we are not knowing the meaning of that song, and simply we are just for namesake. I mean, for the outward, I mean, uh, 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 expression, we are singing that song, and we are just closing that song. So, singing that surrender roll, I man. But sometimes, you know, our eyes are not surrendered. Always, we are singing, "I surrender all, Lord, Lord, I surrender all, I surrender everything." Let me ask you one thing. Sometimes our eyes are not surrendered in the presence of God. sometimes our ears are not surrendered in the presence of god sometimes our tongue is not surrendered in the presence of god that's the reason we are speaking the unwanted things that's the reason that we are i mean i mean speaking again is somebody i mean our hands are not surrendered that's the reason that we are doing something which is against the will of god i mean but let me, but let me tell you one thing i mean dear brothers and sisters and children 
if you sing that song from your heart there is a blessing amen hallelujah there is a blessing in that song if you are singing that song from your heart oh lord i surrender myself hallelujah so remember altar is the place where we see the sacrifice altar is the place where we see the sacrifice so let us sacrifice ourselves in the presence of god our words be sacrificed let our deeds be sacrificed in the presence of god let our thoughts be sacrificed in the presence of god and let our attitude to be present i mean presented and sacrificed in the presence of god in each part of our body be sacrificed at the altar of god hallelujah that's the reason i said that, i mean altar is the place of surrender and the complete dedication of a person hallelujah and we will go to the third point and the third point is the altar is the place of giving altar is the place of giving this is the most important point that we have to think about i mean the people of israel were willfully bringing an offering or giving many things to the altar okay the people of israel were willing willfully bringing many things and they were offering or giving many things to the altar that's the reason i said i'm uh, um, the third point is the altar the place of giving altar is the place of receiving the first one altar is the place of surrender or dedication or submission and now the altar is the place of giving hallelujah so the people of israel knew how important it is to make worship god a priority thing and because they know who is responsible for restoring them to the promised land I mean they were knowing that okay god almighty god is the person he is the responsible person who restored us from the who restored us from the i mean captivity and the exile time i mean so they were knowing that i mean the, the worshiping god must be the priority in your life hallelujah and they were knowing that i mean god is the person who restored them back to the promised land i mean after restoring back to the promised land worshiping the lord became their number one priority number one priority hallelujah we need to do the same thing in our christian life also i know it is not always easy to find time to worship god we all stay very busy with the i mean work and everything else that we sometimes lose track of god sometimes i mean i mean we have many things to do i mean remember one thing god and worshiping and spending time in fellowship with god must be our number one priority hallelujah we need to make sure we are putting god first in our life hallelujah no matter what else may be going on hallelujah so this is what i want to i mean uh, highlight that point you know we are getting more than enough time and let me ask you how much time you are spending with the lord how much time you are spending to worship the lord i mean you have the work and you have the family and you have all other things and everything but how much time you are spending in the presence of god to worship god let me tell you one thing even on sunday Uh, worship is not uh, uh, limited to to a sunday or a, or a two hours of time okay at least two hours we are sitting in the presence of god i don't know how many of you are concentrated in worship i don't know how many of you are concentrated in worshiping god when you are sitting there it at your home nowadays we are not able to go to the church and gather together but we are i mean sitting in our own houses but even then understand god's presence is there how important is worship i mean so when we when we sit in the presence of god realize that god's presence is there i mean sit there in that manner in a proper manner and i mean concentrate yourself that remember that you are worshiping god you are worshiping god hallelujah so we have to i mean spend time in the presence of god with that concentration and consecration in the presence of god when we worship the lord hallelujah avoid all other things when you are sitting for the worship service for two hours avoid everything avoid every disturbance from you sit there sit there and worship god listen the word of god think about what what the lord is speaking to me think about i mean the people are singing they are leading and i want to sing with them because we are also worshiping it is not only the worship team is worshiping or they are leading no we are supposed to lead and we are supposed to worship god 
because we are sitting in the presence of God. Hallelujah. That's what uh, we understand from, I mean, Romans chapter, I mean, uh, 12, verse 1. We'll read uh, that verse. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. I mean, here, Apostle Paul says that, therefore, I urge you, brothers, and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God, this is your true and proper worship. So we people, the New Testament people, New Testament believers, always we are saying that we are worshiping, 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 worshiping. What do you mean by worship? I'll be preaching about worship on one day. Today, just, I mean, just finish, let me finish at this point. You know, I'll be, I'll be preaching about the worship only in, in one Sunday. Okay, so here we see that this is the real worship. The real worship is not the outward expression. Okay, that we are doing something and we are singing outwardly and that is not the real worship. But when that song comes out of our heart, that becomes the real worship. That's the reason that it says that, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies. That's what I said, I mean, I mean the altar is the place where we are giving something unto the Lord, right? We are giving something unto the Lord. At the same time, we are receiving many things. We are receiving many things, and we are surrendering our life. And also, we are giving something to God. We are giving something to God. This is not the place to give the money of you to God. But you have to give that at the same time. This is the time when we worship God, when we come to the altar of God and saying that, okay, Lord, we are coming to your presence with the thanksgiving that I'm giving everything in the hands of God. Hallelujah. Let us, let us, I mean, sacrifice ourselves, I mean, as a living sacrifice and pleasing to God. Hallelujah. And this is your true and proper worship. I mean, let our worship be a true and proper worship. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, let, let our worship be a true and proper worship. Hallelujah. So this verse says that we are supposed to offer our body in the altar. We are supposed to offer or we are supposed to sacrifice or we are supposed to give our body at the altar, which means make your body available in the presence of God to worship the Lord always. Make your body available in the presence of God to worship the Lord always. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, often we are not available for worship God. I mean, we are not available in worshiping God. We are encased with many things and we are involved and busy with many things and unfortunately neglecting to spend time in worship. Hallelujah. Let me tell you one thing, at least for the Sunday service, please don't avoid the Sunday services. Please don't avoid the Sunday services, if possible. Okay, at any cost, you have to spend the worship time in the presence of God. Don't go for anything. Go, don't go for anything. That's not good for us. Amen. So sit there and separate that two hours in the presence of God and sit there and worship God. Amen. Whatever engagement you have, whatever involvement you have, leave that one for, for two hours and tell them, okay, these two hours, I'm busy. I'm busy with worshiping God. I want to go to church and I want to worship. I mean, after that, I'll come or before that, I'll come. This time is sim I mean, simply, I mean, I mean, dedicated and consecrated for worshiping God. I mean, can you say that to your friends? And can you say that to the people, those who known to you? And then God will bless you. Hallelujah. And this is what we understand. I mean, from, the, from this point that we are supposed to worship God, we, not only for two hours, we are supposed to worship God in every moment of our life. Hallelujah. And that is the true and proper worship and giving into the altar of God. Now, we will go to the Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12. Yeah. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Every morning, the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offerings on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowshipping fellowship offering on it. Hallelujah. And here, you know, we read that the fire shall be kept continually. Fire shall be 
fire shall be kept continually on the altar. It is not to go out. Got the point? The fire shall be kept continually on the altar. It is not to go out. It speaks about the continual worship of a Christian. It speaks about the continual worship of a Christian. Hallelujah. And in John chapter 4, verse 24, John chapter 4, verse 24, John chapter 4 verse 24. God is, God is spirit yeah. and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. Yes. Okay. What is that? I mean, God is the spirit and we read that our worship must be always in truth and spirit. Worship must be always in truth and spirit. I mean, worship must not be limited to whenever we sing the songs only. We must worship God each moment of our life. Hallelujah. So remember, altar is the place of giving or offering something. Altar is the place where we give something in the presence of God. Hallelujah. The people of Israel were willfully bringing and offering or giving many things to the altar. Hallelujah. I mean, that's what we understand from the word of God. I mean, this is the time that we are receiving something from the Lord. And this is the time we are surrendering our life in the presence of God. And this is the time that, I mean, we are giving unto the Lord. We are giving unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So let me, I mean, try to conclude my message by reminding the main and the important points of the sermon today. Hallelujah. I request everyone, everyone, I mean, just I mean, stand on your feet now. Hallelujah. Just stand on your feet now. I mean, I know that uh, when you are standing, uh, your faces will not be there at the device, maybe. I mean, but even then, we are going to, I mean, stand together in the presence of God and we are going to dedicate our life in the presence of God. Hallelujah. We need a dedication, we need a surrender, and we need to, I mean, give everything in the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. So this is the time to, to, to I mean, give ourselves the presence of God. And let me conclude my message with the, that, that main points as we are standing together and as we, as you, I mean, eyes are closed. Please close your eyes in the presence of God and just pray together in the presence of God. Hallelujah. What is that? The restoration is the need of Christian today. I mean, we need the restoration from our captivity. We need the restoration of a worship. I mean, in Ezra chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, we read, right after returning to Jerusalem from Babylonian captivity, they together started to rebuild the altar of God. The first thing that they did was rebuilding the altar. Even before they rebuilt the temple, dear brothers and sisters, hallelujah, the beauty of the building where we gather together and worship is not important Rather, God is looking into our inner attitude of worship. Most of the time, we think that the place or the building, the beauty of the building is important. No, never. It is like that. It no, even, I mean, it is not like that also. I mean, we have to surrender our life in the presence of God. And God is not looking for the beauty of the building that we are gathering, but God is looking for the inner attitude of a worshiper. Hallelujah. And let us give more importance to the continual worship in truth and spirit. Hallelujah. Altar is the place of receiving many things. Altar is the place I'm mean, receiving many things. Satisfaction, forgiveness for our sins, refuge and fortress, deliverance from the burdens. And we have the freedom from this altar of Jesus, where Jesus sacrificed himself for the atonement of the sins of you and me. Hallelujah. Altar is the place of surrender. Altar is the place of surrender. Let us sacrifice ourselves in the presence of God. Our words, our deeds, our thoughts, our attitude, and each part of our body be sacrificed at the altar of God. Hallelujah. And thirdly, altar is the place of giving. Altar is the place of giving. Hallelujah. The people of Israel were willfully bringing and offering many things I mean, in the altar. Hallelujah. So this morning, let us also take a decision from our hearts to rebuild our altar of worship. Let us come back to the same position of worship of our initial stage of Christian life. Hallelujah. Let me encourage you this morning Please close your eyes in the presence of God. Remember one thing, that when the people of God were coming back from 
Babylon to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. They see that everything is destroyed. But the first thing that they did was they were trying to rebuild the worship. They were trying to rebuild the altar. Yaka Pida Mana Adhim Pani Wanai Auris Ramicha. Allah the Aliya Mala. Hallelujah. So they were trying to rebuild the altar of God to worship the Lord, to put the offering unto the Lord, to sacrifice themselves unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So this morning, this is the time to dedicate our life in the presence of God. This is the time to surrender our life in the presence of God. Altar is the place where we can receive something. Altar is the place where we can surrender our life in the presence of God. Altar is the place, I mean, where we can give something to the Lord. Hallelujah. What we are going to give to the Lord today. I mean, is it, uh, I mean, something that you have, maybe money or something? No, we are giving God the praises and, I mean, glory and honor unto the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that, uh, I mean, we are sitting in the presence of God, we are standing in the presence of God to give something to the Lord? Hallelujah. Always we are thinking, okay, I want to receive something. I want to receive something. Oh, give me a God. Give me a God. Give me a God. But uh, how many of you think about, uh, I mean, what I am giving to God, what I can return back to God. Hallelujah. If you think that, okay, Lord, I am just, I mean, I mean, I mean, away from the worship. Oh, Lord, if you think that, okay, I mean, your worship area should be rebuilt. If the spirit of the Lord is speaking to you this morning in your heart and saying that your worship area should be rebuilded, your personal life. In your personal life, if the worship area should be rebuilded, if you feel that you're not able to worship the Lord with a consecration, if you feel that you are not able to worship the Lord with a concentration, if you're disturbed with many things, if you are dispersed with many things, let us come back to the Lord. Ask to the Lord, oh Lord, I surrender myself in the presence of God. I surrender myself in the presence of God. Let us sing that song from our heart. Don't sing that song for a namesake. Don't sing that song to show others. Just sing that song from our inside from our inner heart this morning, then there is a blessing in that song. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my Blessed Savior, I surrender all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all to Jesus, I surrender all to be my freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. Oh, I surrender, I surrender all. I surrender, I surrender all. Lord, to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Yon summer pick you know, yon summer pick you know, in the Christian, in the Mundil, yon. Summer pick 
എത്ര പേർക്ക് അത് അങ്ങനെ തന്നെ പാടുവാൻ കഴിയും ഹൗ മെനി ഓഫ് യു ക്യാൻ സിങ് ദറ്റ് സോങ് ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് വേ ഹാലലൂയ ഞാർപ്പിക്കുന്നു എന്റെ ഹൃദയം നിന്റെ മുൻപിൽ ഞാൻ സമർപ്പിക്കുന്നു എന്റെ ഹൃദയം നിന്റെ മുൻപിൽ ഞാൻ സമർപ്പിക്കുന്നു ജയാറ്റുലിയുടെ <laughs> 